sex on and off anabolic steroids. The motivation for this video is that a sexual issue is why most men reach out to me. It's probably the number one reason that men that are on steroids or off steroids for different periods of time, either just off steroids or off for a very long time, and they're having something wrong with their sexual function. So that is the motivation for this. And thank you everyone so much. down to three simple physiologic systems. There's the nervous system, the endocrine system of course, and there's the cardiovascular system. Take a look at the schematic please. So we have the central nervous system in the old school hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis right there and of course in the middle we have the heart and then we have the male pelvic organ which is the penis and the testicles. So and I'm going to explain all this. So <clears throat> when you're on steroids anabolic androgenic agents you're 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 going to have your exogenous levels of steroids go up and it affects your brain your pituitary gland responds from your hypothalamus and it shuts down the gonadotropins lh and fsh everyone knows this your endogenous testosterone is down your testicles are being shut down now this is the whole incredible the amazing piece of this is that everyone does steroids in the beginning, they take these androgens and they feel phenomenal. I mean, everyone, all these men feel great, right, with their sex drive. And then what happens? You do one cycle, the next cycle, you do your PCT, you try to do it. In the end of the day, cycle after cycle, even after even one cycle or a partial cycle, there's some effect. These are the effects I'm trying to explain. They're androgen, they're androgenic effects on your brain not to mention your heart and your testicles and your penis. There's estrogens, there's the prolactin, progestins. They're up and down all over. A very, most people understand this. Most men, most smart guys, the bro science guys, not to mention physicians, endocrinologists and urologists, they understand this piece alone. What's not understood is that if you have depression, if you have any form of anxiety or depression going into the use of steroids, your central nervous system, the, neuro, the neurologic aspect of this presentation is key. Serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, up and down. Men that have even mild bipolar depression, they do steroids. Mania, they become manic. They become manic on this. This stimulates, an, it, this runs a, a, a mania on these guys. And, and that's affecting serotonin and norepinephrine, not to mention dopamine, and they can be hypersexual, and they come off, they're crashing off. So that's the neuroendocrine aspect. Please, you have to see that for what it is and how it affects the, cell, the brain itself and, of course, the testicles. Now, let's get over to the cardiac side. And why is the cardiac side relevant to, for sex on and off steroids? Well... If you look at the data, you'll see that when you're on anabolic androgenic agents, it's going to affect this incredible lining called the endothelial tissue all throughout your body, not just the heart, but how the heart connects with its blood vessels to the head and, of course, down to the pelvis. And in the end of the day, hypertension and lipid abnormalities are relevant. But even for men that think, hey, my blood pressure is fine, I'm on steroids because I'm young and healthy and I eat really well and I exercise and my lipids are not too bad, every man's HDL is going to go down on steroids. And some men, not all men, have, have LDL going up and down. And they may not have a heart attack, obviously, when they're young. And that's, that's an issue. And that's why the, these, these young men feel confident that it's not going to happen to them. And that's a later story. But during this time period, in the post period that we're going to talk about, when you come on and off the steroid, the nitric oxide is the key. I've seen this. I've developed these hypotheses. I've seen the literature. It's very clear. That's why the penis doesn't work. That's why we have Viagra. And of course, Viagra won't just work for the penis 
because these are young men and they don't have intrinsic vascular disease where they have depleted nitric oxide. But when they're on and off steroids, they do. And that's why it becomes a unique set of symptoms, a unique set of pathophysiologic paradigms with the central nervous system and the cardiac system. So you get endothelial dysfunction, you absolutely get it. And that's that why in the period after coming off steroids, men have problems. And this is not all the same for every man. It's all variable. Every man has a fingerprint. And that's what I say, and that's why I treat all men independently. So again, there's the neuroendocrine, there's the cardiovascular, that vascular tissue that's in your corpus cavernosum of your penis that's so fragile, please. That's endothelial dysfunction. That's just what it is, guys. That's what it is right here. Nitric oxide. Okay. You use steroids. You come off steroids. You try doing some of your own PCT. In the end of the day, depending on who you are, depending on how much steroids you've done, how long you've done it, what you've done, in the end of the day, Men have sexual issues off steroids and they have a condition called anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. And we will see variabilities in the gonadotropins in the LH and FSH. Very complicated. Initially, of course, these go up to, to waken up and to stimulate the testicles and the Leydig and Sorotelli cells, but in the end, they give up and we see a very unique type of failure in this type of hypogonadism. Amazing. And the data is all out there on this now. The symptoms of a man who is off steroids, either in the acute period or in the period months and even years later, that are suffering. Anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. It's a sexual issue, number one. They have poor libidos. The brains, they don't feel horny. They have erectile dysfunction. I explained it. How do those work together? CNS neurotransmitters are affected. Serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Those are affected. The penis can't get a good erection, in part the brain, but the nitric oxide, there's a dysfunction in the nitric oxide endothelial aspect of, your, of getting a good erection. In addition to this, there's depression obviously irritability anxiety and of course gynecomastia because when you come off the steroids your body tries to right itself and we get increase in estrogens prolactin progesterone very complicated but very basic and well understood and no one's going to argue this what can you do let's get down to the treatment everyone knows who comes in and sees me that i talk about three doors of price is right door number one stop everything. You have to stop the steroids. Most men come in and they said, Doc, I've already stopped. Now you have to help me. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, how long have you stopped? Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? It could take up to one year. I see this. We have to give it time because in the end, and I will do PCT. I will. It's ethically correct. And there's data now for this. Of course, we're going to talk about this. But you have to give it time. I call it the training wheels. You're off steroids and androgens, and now we're doing different types of PCT, but those are still training wheels on your brain and your testicles. So in the end, you have to wait to see if your brain reconnects with your testicles and your penis. A reconnection time. But if you have depression or anxiety or other comorbid medical issues, heart disease, any type of disease, this is going to be confounding. This is going to be complex. You have to have medical care. This is why I do this. So discontinuation is number one. Door number one, please stop everything. Door number two, yes, medical grade post cycle therapy, physician supervised. Yes, I do do it. Other physicians do it too. Human chorionic gonadotropin, obviously, selective estrogen receptor modulators with Novadex and Clomid, aromatase inhibitors. I'm not going to give the actual doses because the doses are variable, but we use combinations. I use mainly 
the HCG and the serums. And everyone knows I really use HCG more than anything else. Because men that have been exposed to androgens, we found out Clomid is actually potentially very dangerous for them. They feel terrible on that. I've been through some suicides, unfortunately. And I don't want to see that ever again. So, HCG aromatase inhibitors, it's all, I do, the, I do it all personally. But I use the guidelines, of course. But it's all, again, fingerprint-based medicine. It's based on you, the man and what we decide to do together. So, that's A, B, C. D, psychotropic medicines. If you have underlying depression or anxiety, mood disorders, we may have to use some antidepressants. I'm working right now with half a dozen great psychiatrists all over the world, and we have to understand each man. We have to use medicines, so psychotropic medicines. We have to use them and modulate them carefully. E, Erectile dysfunction medications and miscellaneous. We give medicines for erectile dysfunction, which is Viagra. We know it's not going to be the primary issue because it's a complicated issue. It involves a CNS, doc, not my penis, but it's great to have a better erection as you're recovering to increase nitric oxide. See, that's important. So you want to do those together. And miscellaneous is going to be treating other medical conditions with miscellaneous uh, issues. Number three. Door number three, door number one, stop steroids. Door, door number two is post psychotherapy. It's going to be PCT, uh, physician supervised, medical grade, real quality medicines from real pharmaceutical companies in, in America, retail pharmacies, whatever we like to use. Number three, in the end of the day, a lot of men, we bypass this and we just go to weaning doses or chronic doses of testosterone, estrocypinate, or anathe. Outside the country, we have Sustanon 250, all sorts of different ester mixes. But in America, Sipinate and Anthe. And again, if you've been on steroids and testosterone for years and years, we don't play with this. We just have to go right to, to stable doses of testosterone and treat you medically so you feel well and your brain is good. Make sure you, if you have mood disorders, we have to work with that with other doctors. That's what I do all day long. That's why this is so complicated. That's why it's my full daytime job now that obviously I'm very excited about. And the last piece here is continued monitoring. You have to always stay under the wing of a caregiver. It's not just going to be fixed up once and go away. You always need, it's very dynamic to be, to be monitored. So this is it. When you take anabolic steroids, it's going to affect your sex. In the beginning, it'd probably be great. Please understand for young men out there, if you start these drugs, you may never ever stop them. You may regret what you've done in your recovery period. I really hope this helps the world. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.